Crystal here. Welcome to another episode with the Interactive Immersive HQ. And we're going to continue our series of making generative art that is influenced by other artists. And in this episode, we're going to cover Arduida Emilina Menino, also known as Dada Nino. She's an Italian artist um, that's a visual artist and a painter. And she was a me- member of the Milanese uh, avant garde. Um, artists seen in the 1960s and that's for right here and I especially was really drawn to this particular artwork I have it a little bit closer here and I loved how it was 2d but it looks how it has depths and as all these fabric fabric hills and I thought it would be really fun to see this anime and what if we do it in touch designer so this is the influence and this I'll show you what I got <laughs> and again, this is uh, influence, it's not the same thing, uh, but I used uh, grids and sops and a top noise to really create this generative um, piece that is constantly evolving. And it is very flexible where you can play with different parameters and a noise to really make it your own. So if you're interested in recreating this, just continue watching. Let's start with a clean network, I'll delete everything and start fresh. I'll drop a grid sop. And this grid sop, I want it to be a rectangle. So the size, I'll have a one by two. I have this viewer active and press W so I can see the columns and rows. I'll add the rows and columns to quite a lot. I'll have 200 rows, oh, not 2,000, 200, and 100 columns. Yep. And if you zoom in, you can see there's a lot of rows and a lot of columns. Awesome. So next, I'll add a noise. This noise, I kind of like to just have it on the side just so I can kind of see what's happening over here. And I'm going to change a lot of these parameters over here. Um, the type, again, so this is what I just did for the little demo um, version I showed you, but I really highly recommend you to play around with these these parameters. There's no really right or wrong way to do it, but this is just what I found that worked for me in the last thing. Um, but the type, I chose this Hermite, and then I have the period to be 0.5, and harmonics, I'll put it set to zero. Uh, roughness, zero. Uh, exponent to be 0. 0.73. Um, amplitude, 0.5. So something's happening here. And in the transform, I'm going to slow this down to be times 0. 0.1. So just Play little movements happening here. And I'm going to have this TX to be well, let's keep it. So this is this is the noise on the stop happening. And if you press W, you can see it in wireframe mode. I'm gonna add a null for this. And I'm gonna name this null to be called grid because I'm an instance later. And after this, I'm going to add a, a line saw. And I'm going to have this line um, be instance uh, with a grid. I'm going to have this point, but the line that I want to be really short because you see there's like a bunch of short lines. So I'll have this to be 0 0.01, really tiny. Really tiny, <laughs> and then I'll add a geometry comp after this. And in this geometry comp, we'll change some things here. Let's just start instancing this um, on the translate. So I'll just directly drop this in the translate op and have the speed p0, p1, and p2. And right now, it just kind of looks like the grid. Uh, grid instance that's just like having all the rows because there's no rotation on the lines. We'll get there. But for now, let's make this render by adding a camera. This camera, I'm going to change this translate to be one because I want to be 
pretty close. And I'll have a render pop. And you can't really see it very well because the lines are dark, but I'm gonna add a null afterwards and I'll call this out. I have this in the background so I can kind of see what's going on. So I made it super close, but I actually want this to be a portrait mode, uh, portrait um, resolution. So you can have it to be 720 by 81280 if you're using a not commercial version, but I'm going to have it to be 1080 by. Yay. Awesome. I kind of want to see what's happening. So um, I'm going to comp this over a constant. Constant, I'll make it the same resolution 1080 by 1920. And I'll add a over and have that behind us. So, ooh, really white. Um, I'm gonna have this a little bit, a little bit more of like a gray color, a little like a wash off um, color. And also I'm gonna just go ahead and I wanna crop the edges off. So, and then I'll get back to making this look nicer, but I just want to do the, Coping side first. For this rectangle, I'll set it to same resolution, 80 by 20. And the size of this, I will have it to be point, point 8 by 1.6. Yeah. Yeah, this is pretty much um, the whole thing times by uh, one by one point eight. So yeah, so I'll have this multiply this, and then I'll just give like a nice clean edge. Ta da! Ta da! Um, this lines is. It looks kind of funky because it doesn't have it also doesn't have a material so i'll add a line material and this line material i'll change some of these parameters over here i will have it to be um, distance near to be two distance far to be zero with near i'll keep i'll have it to be two and the color line near, I have it black. And line far, also black. Now let's see what happens if we just drop this onto the geometry material. It's a lot darker now. So you don't have this like weird gray middle ground. And then if you want it thicker, you can play with the with near, but I think two, I like two on it. Great. So. And if you notice that your um, FPS, your frames are dropping, you hide it. It should, it should get back to 60. Or maybe not. <laughs> um, it's a lot. It's a lot, it's, it's, it's a lot of, a lot of grows and columns. <laughs> but now we'll play with the rotation with a noise top. And this noise top, I want the resolution to be the same amount of instancing. So I will just directly have this grid row be this parameter. And then I will have this um, grid row to be the reference. And then I'll have the column reference for the height. Is this right? Nope, I did a reverse. So I have this to be columns and this be rows. And then now, so if I want to decide to have, actually I want to have like a hundred rows, it will change this noise. 
generatively. So I'm going to play with some of these parameters. I'll actually first change to make sure this pixel format is 13 bit float. And then I, what I did on the last example, and again, feel free to play around with these parameters, but I had it to be perling 4D and the period to be 0.8, harmonics to be 6, harmonic spread to be 0.5, harmonic gain, zero this out, and exponent to 0.6, and amplitude very small to be 0.1. Awesome. And the translate, I will have it to be the Y to be five. Great. Now, now we have this noise and I'm gonna add a map. And for, and then just turn off this background so it won't be too busy for the range. I want to change the front range to negative one from one to zero to B60. I'm going to play around with these numbers, um, but then from range R, negative one, to range from zero to B200. Add a null afterwards, and I'll call this rote list. More instant. Um, and then <laughs> for the rotation operator, I'll just drag this down here. And then I'll just have the rotation Z to be R. Let's see what's happening. Woo, look, ta-da! So without anything, and with R, that is something. Um, so really, this is, that's it. <laughs> But you can play around. So this is the degree of the line. So you can see if you have 360 range, I think it's, it gets a bit too wild. But you can play around with having like 30, 60. Um, maybe 30 is a little bit more subtle too. And same with the two range of R if it's like 60 versus 360. I can find the, the angle range that you 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 prefer. And what is if you turn off the grid noise, this itself, this rotation already gives a um, gives a depth. And the noise it gives the physical depth of it. So you can also play around with the different parameters for both the noise top and the noise top to see what different different um, different looks it'll give pretty much and even having the different types of noise type can be gives different variation so I hope you enjoy this simple tutorial and I would love to see um, your work. So feel free to share it on your social media, tag the Interactive Immersive HQ and my Instagram. If uh, I'll leave my handle in the, the caption below, description. And if you have any comments on future artists you would want us to feature, Feel free to also leave in the comments and I'll see you next time. Bye. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you're serious about taking your touch designer and interactive skills to the next level, I highly recommend you check out the Interactive and Immersive HQ Pro. It's the only educational resource and community of its kind for touch designer and interactive professionals. You can learn more by checking out the link in the description. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button. And if you're new here, don't forget to hit subscribe and the little bell icon for more awesome free content.